Welcome back. How are you getting on? So, we're joined by not James Eaton, someone <laughs> else. Uh, how about you introduce yourself? <laughs> I am stealing James's uh, Zoom today, but my name is Maddie Tyers and I am an actor. I am a writer, a, I suppose, kids entertainer presenter from Melbourne in Australia. Yeah. Awesome. So we, we know uh, yourself and uh, Jimmy from uh, Lego Masters Australia. So I suppose we'll start there and then we'll get into your acting. Yeah, so great. So how did you guys get accepted for our show? Yeah, right. Well, uh, so Jimmy and I, uh, away from our sort of performing careers, are massive, uh, massive children, basically. <laughs> we do uh, love collecting a lot of toys, really into sort of pop culture and uh, sort of 80s, 80s memorabilia and Lego being one of them. And yeah, when we started dating, probably like six years ago now, uh, one of the first things we did together was buy uh, the, the Lego Sea Cow from the Lego movie, if you guys have seen it. Um, very great build and we bought that together for a new uh for a christmas present and we we're like oh let's uh let's be super cool and uh build this on new year's eve which is exactly what we did and since then it has been a yeah a slow descent into losing all of our money to lego and yeah we've just been collecting it and so we got married two and a bit years ago and we had a Lego themed wedding. So the, uh, the Lego, uh, Lego instructions for the, the wedding invite and there was Lego all over the wedding. People could kind of build stuff throughout and yeah, it's just a silly fun wedding full of games and stuff. And I think from that, obviously people knew that we were into it and yeah, auditions for Lego masters kind of started shortly after that. And we'd kind of, yeah, been sent this link by, I reckon about 50 of our mates going, oh my God, you guys have to audition. We thought it was a joke at first. Like who is going to make a show about Lego? Like how, how, how desperate can, yeah. can we be? Um, but yeah, sure enough, it was a thing and it was a wicked thing. Like, it, yeah, we kind of auditioned just by sending in a video, a bit of a chat to camera about, you know, what we do and what we like. And, and then from there, it was quite a le lengthy process. Like we had to, you know, do a series of sort of interviews and then like a building challenge where we went into like, uh, like a hotel for the day and sort of had a build off for three hours. And yeah, like I think it got to about three, four months later, um, we got this sort of email saying, we'd love you to be part of it. You're, you're starting in two weeks. <laughs> so it was a very quick kind of tie our life together. And Obviously, being reality television, um, everything is completely hush hush, and we had to sign these NDAs, and you know you can't tell a soul about this. So I had to go and like leave from work, and yeah, I was on this mysterious uh, uh, sort of eight week leave, and everyone thought I was either pregnant or I was very unwell. So <laughs> I had to do a whole lot of lying. Whereas you know, you know, really, we were just having a great lot of time building Lego together. So yeah, it's kind of crazy to think it's been almost two years, oh, two years now since we've done it. We, we filmed it anyway. So there's already been a second season of Lego Masters here in Australia and they're about to start shooting the third season. So, you know, we're old hat now, I think, uh, in the Lego world. The OGs though. Yeah, totally. The OGs, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and this obviously led to you guys doing... Um, the Maddie and Jimmy show you do on YouTube. Yeah. But um, you guys have not bought it that in about four months. So you guys want to keep at it or what's the crack? Yeah. So originally when we started that, uh, the Maddie and Jimmy kind of live stream show was, a, um, uh, I, I, I got, I'm sure you guys have sort of experienced this um, in Ireland too, but with, with all coronavirus, are you still there? Yeah, we're still here. Oh. Oh, for some reason I've lost my screen. That's okay. Um, uh, we decided to, uh, yeah, basically kind of uh, do a live show rather than put on um, what we were planning to do a comedy show for the Melbourne Comedy Festival, like a live a live <coughs> show on stage. And uh, obviously that all got kind of pulled. And um, we were like, oh, bugger it, let's do something uh, virtual instead. And Jimmy being quite uh, tech savvy, he does a lot of streaming and kind of content creating for his- And a cool uh, podcast. Role. Yeah, exactly. A cool podcast with my dad. Totally. Um, he was like, yeah, we could totally do this from home. And that's kind of how that started. So we ended up doing 10 weeks of the show. And, and I think eventually we'd love to kind of go through with another, another season, but we've both just been sort of busy with other projects at the moment. We've kind of just really embraced working from home and lockdown and 
yeah, it's been great in a way. It's kind of been a really creative period for us both. We've just been kind of smashing out um, different content. So eventually I think we'd love to get back into the live streamed kids show. Um, yeah, hopefully in the new year, I would say. Fair enough. Awesome. Um, yeah. So speaking of other projects, you are uh, an actress. So actually, how, how do you feel about that? Is it actor or actress? Oh, look, uh, I think probably act is the, probably the better term these days. I think, you know, one in one, but either or, you know, I'll take what I can get. At the moment, I'm not, I'm not either. I am currently unemployed, so <laughs> I will take either term. <laughs> Out of work actor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, we, we talked a lot of actors. Um, and so we were just talking about that yesterday, just funny, because I said actress and Jared was talking because Jared kind of works on set sometimes. And he said that yeah. most female female actors they just said they prefer actors than that, over actors. It's yeah. Yeah, totally. I think it is a bit I suppose these days as well, it's like one term for everyone kind of kind of works and fewer letters. There you go. Let's there go. <laughs> Saving time, save money. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> what got you into acting? Like was it an accident? Did you just fall into it? What happened? Yeah. What um, yeah, I suppose you could say it was an accident. I, uh, I look, I've always been a, a bit of a, I suppose, performer, even as a kid, you know, I loved, uh, making up stupid songs and dances for my family and friends as, as a really little kid, but I sort of started dancing was probably my first thing that I really got obsessed with as maybe seven, eight year old. And I did that for about 15 years. Um, and, sort of from the, the dancing world, I kind of moved into musical theatre. And then when I started musical theatre in sort of, I was probably 12 and I did my first sort of amateur production of Annie, love the Annie, uh, I kind of realised I, I actually prefer the acting side of this rather than the, the singing and dancing. So, yeah, I, I come from, you know, just a standard kind of non actor family uh although my mum my mum's a musician so I suppose there is a bit of creativity there but they me, neither my mum or dad knew anything about the acting world and I you know remember being sort of a 12 13 year old being like oh this is totally what I want to do this one will be when I grow up and they were like sure but we don't know how to make that happen so good luck um and yeah I kind of went off and I think 13 or 14 I found myself an agent and you know being very determined I'm quite a business lady when I want to want to be and yeah I started sort of auditioning for ads and stuff as a kid sort of yeah early sort of high school and it sort of blossomed from there I suppose and kind of got my big break or when I say big break you know probably the big break for now anyway uh when I was 17 just wrapping up uh, high school uh, on a kids TV show uh, for a couple of years, which was awesome fun. The Elephant Princess that was. And yeah, hoping to, you know, still chugging away. It's unfortunately, uh, as it is across the whole globe at the moment, the whole entertainment industry is a little bit, a uh, little bit shot. Uh, there's not really much happening. So everything's yeah. a bit on hold, uh, mm. particularly in Australia. I know there's stuff shooting in LA, but um, yeah, at the moment in Melbourne, we're all still locked uh, in our houses, unfortunately. So we've just got to make use of our green screen and make our own, st our own stuff. Yeah, we, we've talked to a lot of actors and actresses and it's kind of the same story every time. Totally. Like, uh, yeah. Okay, th th there's work on, but it's for like the creme de la creme of actors. Like no, mm. one, no average totally. Joe Schmo is getting out there, not even for an audition. No, and there's only so exactly. much acting you can do on Zoom. Oh, and that's exactly it. It's so true. In fact, I was actually just watching um, uh, on ABC iView, which is our kind of online, I suppose the equivalent of BBC uh, here in Australia. And I noticed that Michael Sheen and David Tennant have a, a show out at the moment because they were both meant to be doing a show yes. uh, in the West End. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I think it's called yeah. like Staged or something. But that's exactly the life we're living at the moment bizarre rehearsals on on zoom and that's exactly what i've been doing the last few nights too gerard with that uh, when i've been studying i'm doing like an online scene study class which that's is cool. so it's awesome loving it but it's this format doing scenes which is so weird and i did a scene the other night and it was a it's a kissing scene and it's like Cool. Let's see how this is going to work over a screen. Sure. <laughs> um, well, taking like kissing yeah. your webcam kind of thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> pretty much, pretty much. It is, um, it's a very strange world we're living in right now, but you just got to roll with it. I suppose this is what we've got to get used to for the time being. I saw a load of videos yesterday of people. Uh, yeah. I saw a lot of videos of people going up to, they're filming, they started refilming the Batman in Liverpool. Sweet. And loads of people yes. started taking loads of videos of it. So, I don't know. Oh I my mean, God. You could probably get the entire movie just by the clips people were like. Yeah. I was going to say, a fan, <laughs> a fan, uh, a fan trailer, hey, P- paste it all together. Um, that's exciting. Well, that's good to know that things are starting to shoot again. Mm. That's, that's mm. epic. Is that the Robert Pattinson Batman? Is that yes. the one you're talking about? Yes. yes. Sweet. That looks amazing. I'm very excited. Colin Farrell is. Did you see Colin Farrell and all the penguin makeup? Oh my god, no. so good! Oh, dear. I'm quite excited about that he cast. Looks so uh, different. <laughs> Trying to okay. avoid everything till it's out. Just to yeah, that's probably a good good point. Mm. Spoilers. Sorry, apologize. Is my dog going crazy? Um, so yeah, that's kind of where my acting journey has sort of taken me uh, so far. Uh, hopefully, this whole pandemic brushes over and we can get out auditioning again and the one good thing about Australia even though we are so bloody far from everywhere else on the planet there is quite a lot of productions coming here to shoot uh, and New Zealand as well because it's a lot cheaper than uh, shooting in the states so we've just got all our fingers and toes crossed that you know some some good stuff comes here in the the next couple of years. Um, Just just, uh, with what Thomas said there a second ago people like flooding the set taking pictures and stuff Mm. I, I was involved in a movie with Matt Damon uh, up until oh like God. last week and that's amazing there, there was three lads and they, they they got onto set by wearing high-vis jackets and just masks and yeah. they spent ages oh. on set behind the camera with the crew you know with the main cast with the director oh I'm so sorry about that Come you're here. okay I'm going to put him on my lap and he can listen to the story. Yeah. And, oh, and then uh, what they, this is Chewy, by the way. <laughs> oh, Chewy. Hi, Chewy. Oh, yeah. He's a I see the resemblance. <laughs> uh, no, they, they did get uh, caught in the end, but I thought it was just some of the funniest, funniest shit ever. Well, These three lads just put on a high vis and snuck on the set. That, look, I have yeah. to give props for being game because that takes balls to do that seriously it does. like you would usually have to have i suppose like lanyards and stuff but the minute people see a high vis vest they're like yeah legit <laughs> they're part of it they're part of it That's because amazing. you couldn't see their whole face and then yes. i think it was also i guess no one really knows what they're doing on set to yeah. be honest yeah, totally. i was with the uh uh i guess the extra handlers and mm. so on no one had a clue what was going on Holy didn't even God, know if we were on insane. set today. Wow. Um, so it was crazy. But, what a um, cool experience. Did you get to meet Matt Damon? Um, kind of. But I can't, I can't really say anything until the movie's out. It's very, mm. totally. Lips are sealed. Yeah. He went to Bring shake his hand me. and Matt just kind of screamed at him. Jerry brought up the Martian. And he has, he's like the PTSD thing. <laughs> like whenever he hears that, it, it goes into complete like, you know, remission. It's like, poor guy. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's damaged he's damaged oh no. honestly i'm spending all those souls on mars it, it just gets them <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. how's that really doing with the I, I think someone asked him for a selfie and got fired Seriously? oh really i'm not 100 percent on that so Jesus. But, uh, I yeah. was listening to it. I heard a story. I listened to a, pop- a couple of like acting podcasts, and I had a there was a story the other day about Robert Downey Jr. was like he come to came to Australia for some sort of press kind of run for I think it was when Iron Man was around, <clears throat> and um, everyone was like freaking out. This this company, this events company, that because you know they'd been told by his sort of management team that you know he likes this particular kind of water, and so they had to get this water flown in, like bottled water <laughs> from wherever the fuck it was, and everything like had to be right. And don't look him in the eye because he gets really pissed off. Um, but apparently, when he got here, he was just like the loveliest guy, and like apparently just pissed himself when they were like, "We've got you this water." He's like, "I don't care. Like I'll have the tap water." <laughs> Like you just couldn't care less at all. So it's quite funny. You hear these stories, you're like, I wonder if they actually give a shit or whether yeah. it's more of the, yeah. the people behind them. It, right? it, it tends <laughs> to be someone who's like in middle management and totally. they think they got to get this 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like, 
like the idea of getting like so stressed out about which water he has. Yeah. You know? Totally. He's like, uh, I don't give, I don't care. I really couldn't care less. Yeah. To me out of the tap. Mm. <laughs> now, I, I normally ask most, most actors uh, mm. or act, actresses um, on roles they've applied for and lost before. So we've, mm. we've had, we had one recently and I took the tea. We had a guy who nearly became Spider-Man, like the most recent oh. version of him. The um, Tom Holland one? Yeah. Tom yeah. Holland. Oh, sick. Mm -hmm. So what's your experience with this? What, what roles have you missed out on or nearly gotten? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, oh, look, I have to admit there was one recently that I was incredibly crushed about. Um, so in New Zealand at the moment, they've just resumed filming is uh, a this re like a, I suppose an anime remake live action remake of Cowboy Bebop. I don't know if you guys have watched much anime. Yeah, I see, I've seen that. I've seen that. And uh, yeah, so it was a role, um, a villain in that. And I got very close, and it would have been friggin' amazing because you know shooting in uh, shooting in New Zealand and like lots of amazing special effects and stuff. Um, but you know, lucked out. I got I got very close. I ended up going with the Kiwi, which you know, look makes sense and good on her. I say. Um, but yeah, I think the roles that you miss out on that are sort of like. I suppose shows that you'd watch, you'd really want to watch anyway, are the ones that hurt the most. You're like, damn it. Yeah. I'm also a huge horror film uh, junkie. So I've gone for a couple of like trashy Australian horror films and kind of not quite got there. But at the same time, it's like, damn it. I would love to be on Wolf Creek number three. <laughs> yeah, Wolf Creek was good. <laughs> totally. I've always wanted to be chopped up. That's my dream in a film. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's pretty rough. And Cowboy Bebop is pretty cool. That's, that's I'm looking a shame. forward to seeing it though. So at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, well, I'm, it'll be awesome when I get to watch it. It'll be Look, great. I'm sure. Season two. Season two. Let's exactly. hope for season two. Totally. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's not too bad. Um, but yeah, your, your man who lost out on um, Spider Man recently lost that, out. Look, I have to admit, that would be completely heartbreaking. Absolutely mm. heartbreaking. Mm. Um, I did see, I've, I watched, I'm a big like nerd and watch a lot of audition tapes of people that end up getting roles and stuff. And uh, I did see Tom Holland's audition tape for Spider-Man. And I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's amazing. Cause he's yeah, like yeah. an acro, he's like an yeah. acrobat like as well. So was, <laughs> when he did that stuff. flip, yeah, a guy left because he knew, like he walked out of that <laughs> casting area cause he knew he was not getting cast. He's like, I'm not getting this. This is not going to happen. Yeah. Oh my God. All, all the guys, because Tom, Tom came in late for that interview. Mm. So the lads are sitting around. There's eight of them there. Mm. Our, our man, Brandon, was sitting there like, you know what, there's probably a good chance I have this. And it's actually like something like 50,000 people had applied. Oh, could you imagine? So yeah. he's just sitting there like, yeah, it's probably going to be Spider-Man. Mm. I know everything about the comic books. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, are we not done? Is what, said, is what another uh, actor said. And then someone else comes in. There's Tom Holland, yeah. and uh, the the thing was, they could they, they recognised him, but they weren't sure from what. So mm. he he comes in, uh, he walks up to like the uh, casting directors, and I kind of ask them a question, like really quietly, and then they say, "Yeah, that's a great idea." And then he goes back, and then he does a flip and comes into his scene, <laughs> and then a guy leaves. He just like, Fuck this. <laughs> it's not a chance I'm getting in. Yeah. Oh my God! Could you imagine? Yeah, pretty devastating. Well, at that, that moment, looked... everyone knew. Yeah, for sure. Props to him. Those eight years of acrobat gymnastic tra uh, gymnastics training had definitely paid off. I'm sure. <laughs> I suppose it did. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. The results speak for themselves. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I don't know. In a situation like that, like, I just give up. I know. I would feel exactly the same. And look, it's, I have to, there, there was times uh, like that similar uh, that I've sort of felt like I might as well not be here. So um, Margot Robbie and I kind of, we did a show together many, many years ago. And so when she was on Neighbours, so she started on this, uh, I don't know, you, do you guys watch Neighbours in Ireland? Is that a thing? I know it's, it's a really thing fun. in Ireland, Joe. I don't yeah. watch it so. Mm. Oh, look, it's not fabulous, but a lot of kind of people have started out on Neighbours. And at the time, we were probably like 21 and, Na and Margot was on, on Neighbours at the time. So she was not huge, but she was kind of, you know, on the TV a lot. And so people knew her face. And she's obviously absolutely beautiful. But being the same age 
um, and, you know, blonde and stuff would always get put up for the same roles. And I remember seeing her in the casting room for a few things and just being like, fuck, why am I even here? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody Margot. But good on her. I say she's amazing. She's like so lovely and kicking all the butt. So it's great. Yeah. It's great. Butt kicking. That's what she, <laughs> totally. that's, that's what she does. Um, <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, no, she, she's a great actor, um, actress, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to get back to that so many times. But, uh, Love it. Yeah, she's really good. Mm. Um, so 2020 hasn't been all too bad for you. You've gotten to do uh, this new movie coming out, or is it already out, 24 Hours? Yeah, yeah, totally. So you got a pretty good role in this. Yeah, look, hilariously, I'm playing the Prime Minister. Uh, that's oh, wow. Time <laughs> I will ever get to say I'm involved in politics. Um, but yeah, this really cool kind of project has popped up during lockdown. Um, a friend of mine, Tyson Jarvis, who's made a whole bunch of... Um, bunch of films um he was like oh let's try and make something in in lockdown and uh utilize everyone that is at home just sitting behind the computer screen um and see what we can do with it so everyone basically shot their own footage at home so we kind of met we all met with the director and the producers and um they kind of gave us the vision of what they were going for and yeah we all kind of uh, had to sort of produce our own uh, scene which is really cool and it was ha so helpful having having Jimmy because he's obviously so good at all that stuff and lighting and sound and everything um so yeah I'm th I think that's coming out maybe toward the back end of this year but ironically you know it's about the end of the world and you know it's set in 20 uh, 2021, I think it is. Oh, no, not 2021, 2025. And it's so five years post pandemic sort of time. So we, you know, refer to coronavirus a lot. But, you know, this meteorite is coming to crash land on Earth and ruin us all. Um, so, you know, happy yeah. light viewing. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> Imagine that was the actual reality, you know? Fucking. I know, right? I wouldn't be surprised after this year. I'm like, what else are they going to throw at yeah. us? Seriously. When are, the, yeah. when are the aliens arriving? Five year <laughs> pandemic, then I fucking yeah. need to race. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, totally. didn't NASA found like a signal that they haven't picked up um, recently since like 2014, though? They've been t picking up oh. a whole bunch of signals. They, they have, there's something in Saturn's rings uh, letting off signals. We're not alone. Who knows, so. guys? Who knows? Exactly. Maybe it is on its way. Bloody hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually I've been getting really into like the whole life outside of our own place at the moment because I'm thinking like time to get out of here, you know? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're sending a, a drone, uh, the Titan, you know, one of, I think it's Jupiter's moons. It mm. could be Saturn's. Yeah. Um, fairly soon, uh, 2026. And they're just going to fly a drone around that planet or mm. that moon looking for life. It's about the size of Mercury. It's, you know, like we have like oxygen in our air. Uh, theirs is just methane. So they have methane lakes as well. So we have liquid water, they have wow. li liquid methane. Oh my so it's, God. you know. That is crazy. I know. I'm like, cool. guys, you know, retirement plan, Jupiter. Let's see. Let's see how we go. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I've seen memes and it was like, there could be oil on uh, on Titan because of all the methane. And then it was like America, like just fucking getting there as soon oh, as possible. I was going to say, let's just let's just put Trump there. That'll be a good start. Anyway, just on go. his own. <laughs> on his own. He can, govern, he, can be, he can govern that moon. How's that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> build, build a wall on Titan. Ah, <laughs> uh, so good. <laughs> so are you in lockdown in australia now at the moment or how is um, it over there yeah we are thomas so we have officially been in lockdown since march which is um you know as my dog would attest and incredibly frustrating we had so we kind of kicked off um state what we're calling stage three lockdown uh in march and we had a brief period of about two weeks in around July where we were like allowed to see a few people like you could see up to five people outside your house you know in another person's house kind of thing and then we had a huge uh outbreak in Melbourne here so 
weirdly and like frustratingly uh, we're the only state in the whole country that has been kind of had these numbers so we're the only state that's had the the strict lockdown but yeah basically stage four lockdown we've been in for three or four months now we've literally just Jimmy and I and Chewy and that's it <laughs> um, yeah. so you have to go okay. out that's exactly it. We're allowed to go out for now. We're allowed to go out for two hours a day for exercise, but it was one hour, and you're only allowed to go outside, yeah, for either exercise or for your essential items. So you know, going to the supermarket or the chemist or whatever it may be. So it it really feels like we're living in like an apocalyptic film right now. It's it's absolutely bonkers, and we always have uh, we have to wear masks as well. So they're mandatory yeah. to wear masks outside. Is that like in Ireland as well? Yeah, yeah, same thing. And so, uh, yeah, just you know, walking around the streets, and it's getting to summer over here now. So the weather's really improving. It's getting quite warm. So we're wearing these masks, and I'm just we're all going to have these crazy tans <laughs> come, yeah. come Je- uh, December, January. It's going to be hilarious, but. But look, we're we're um, we're fortunate. We're 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 healthy and we're we're safe, and uh, that's you know I can't complain too much. I'm pretty. I'm pretty and stupid. you got Chewy. And we got Chewy. As annoyingly loud as he is, every time we're on a Zoom call, he's like, "I am not getting attention. I'm gonna make noise." So <laughs> I apologize for that. It's okay. Um, and how are you guys going with lockdown? Are you guys in like strict restrictions so as well? So shit. <laughs> oh, no. our, our second wave has been worse than our first wave oh, incredibly worse really... yeah um, oh that sucks yesterday or as of t- tomorrow thomas is it tomorrow. Uh, as of tomorrow we cannot go to anyone else's houses by our own but mm-hmm. um schools are still open schools are okay so you guys can still go to uni like go to college yeah uh, yeah we don't know. It's it depends. We really. um, we're not sure yet. Kind of. Uh, we go oh, on Fridays. We go for like two hours, but the rest is online. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. But the the thing with this kids being in school really it really grinds my gears. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. I I can't believe, like the kids are still in school. Um, yeah. My my brother and sister are in school at the moment, and they've been out for four weeks because of contact tracing, and they've only been in for yeah. two. Yeah. And they've exams soon. Oh, it's so, so hard. It's so hard, isn't it? It's like, oh, I do feel so sorry for people studying and kids at school. It's like most of their parents here in Melbourne have had to be homeschooling the last six, seven months, um, as well as working from home. And like, there's just all these crazy stories. And like, even because we're on Zoom all day for work as well, but you know, people in the background, their kids are screaming and pulling stuff. It's just like, oh God. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's really tough. It's really tough. And I'm sorry you guys are going through that too. It's really shit. We've kind of like slowly adjusted. It's taken a very long time, but you know, it's just hard. Like we're we're social people as well. And so not being able to see your mates and stuff is just tough. And it's never the same on Zoom either, right? Like it's so hard to kind of, yeah. Mm. No good. Hopefully things improve for you guys soon and you know, you've You're got plenty of Netflix to keep you busy and entertained over the next yeah. little while. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of Netflix, I had my heart broken watching it the other day. Why? What yeah. did you watch? You see that new David Attenborough documentary? Oh my god, dude. I was in I was bawling my eyes out watching that. Oh, it was so heartbreaking. I, I teared up, genuinely. Totally. Oh, that footage of the, the sea. Um, what were they like? The walruses? Kind of walruses. Oh God, I just, yeah. nah, it's too much. I know I was probably like, this is probably not the ideal thing to watch when I'm already feeling slightly fragile about the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. The second um, we seen that, we started, or the second I seen it and I told Thomas, uh, yeah. I, I, we, we did the same on Twitter where we started like, challenging people to plant trees and uh, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. Well, that's yeah. it. I think all the little changes that we can make and even Jimmy and I have watched it, watched it and we're like, we need to cut down eating so much meat and, you know, what can we actually, tangible things can we do to, yeah. to kind of help? But yeah, oh my God, I'm obsessed with David Attenborough too. He is another love of my life. I, uh, 
He's amazing. He's in the unreal. Did, I think he broke a record because he just joined Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw it. But yes. Okay. And he got the most followers in the shortest amount of time <laughs> or something like that. And the, uh, the thing I love about him was like, he doesn't follow anyone. Like there's just so like little care. He's just like, no, he's just following. I, I doubt he knows what to do. I, know. <laughs> I doubt he knows it's a function. So he's 93, like, jeez. I know, right? I'm, I'm sure someone hands him the phone, says, David, say what you got to say, and then they post yeah. it for him. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Smile, here we go. Cool. Yeah. Maybe uh, if it's his grandkids a, or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But he is a living legend, and okay. in Australia in particular, too, I think, you know, people just worship him. I just really hope, I was saying to Jimmy, I'm like, it'd be great if this doco was, like, mandatory watching for everyone. Like, I yeah. feel like most of people, like, young people will watch it anyway, but I feel like it's the old people that bloody need to watch this stuff half yeah. the time. Boomers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. but like, no, he, he's super old. He's super into it. Uh, <clears throat> like, watching that documentary is basically him saying, I've been doing this my entire adult career. You guys didn't listen. Here the artifacts as they are now. Uh, here's some of the only things we could possibly do to fix this. I give up. Mm. He's literally telling us what we need to do. He's like, it's so shit, but you can fix it by doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Totally. He, he talks about rewilding. Mm. That's mm. kind of, that's, that's, that means a lot for Europe because yeah. most large European animals are dead extinct mm -hmm. um during lockdown there's a wolf spotted in normandy for the first time in over 200 years really because it, it came up from uh the south because no one was around yeah. but uh yeah like ireland is one of the most deforested countries in europe mm -hmm. because the whole thing with the british empire they didn't want to cut down their own forests; they were too pretty mm -hmm. um but yeah so we're very deforested as a result. We have a lot, and they hunted a lot of our game. We have very mm. few things left. No, uh, I seen bad. a deer for my first time in Ireland mm. uh, two weeks ago, and really? I'm 19. And yeah. I, I go out to the woods. I do archery out in the woods. Never seen a deer. Yeah. Um, wow. And yet, so he talks about rewilding. For us, that means like bringing back a lot of things that have been mm. gone. Um, I think that was the thing I found so uh, confronting in the doco, like how he would he was doing the time periods every you know what of twenty years, yeah. whatever it was, and the stats yeah. and how the uh, yeah the the the, light, um, the percentage of animals wildlife that are around now is just shocking. I'm just like, oh, this oh, is horrible. So embarrassing. Uh, so embarrassing. One third of all mammals are us. Yeah. So like fifty six percent are the ones that we eat. Yeah. I think yeah. he included some other things in there because I'm not sure what like dogs and cats take up. Yeah, totally. Like, uh, and then the remaining four percent are everything from mice to whales. Yeah, that that's in like, mammals, and in birds, uh, sixty percent of all birds are domestic birds, mm. mainly chicken. Mm, that we so. eat. Mm. Oh man, it's yeah, it was full on. The one little bit of kind of I suppose hope or light that I saw that, that I suppose the imagery of him walking through Chernobyl that was all just overgrown with forestry was That's one hell of a way such to start. a beautiful oh wasn't it a beautiful image just to think that this place was completely ruined ravaged by humans and error and and science and then to see now that it's completely flourishing and the wildlife is sort of taking yeah. over it's pretty beautiful I'm like oh yeah amazing kind of juxtaposition have you guys seen chernobyl speaking of the, the yes. no i haven't oh it's a goodie thomas again really light comical lovely viewing um, yeah. <laughs> no it's pretty full-on and yeah definitely be in the mood but oh that was pretty amazing watching as well that one it's on my list yeah. <laughs> i have a lot of stuff on my list it's <laughs> it's getting pretty list. it's pretty full at the moment but you know I'm, I'm getting through it good work good work well, hopefully, like, hopefully you guys aren't locked down for long, but, you know, you've got time to watch some stuff, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've just been watching a lot of David Attenborough. Like, it's just, like, life yeah, just on go our through the back planet catalog, was pretty you know? cool. Oh, so good. There's so many good ones. I know, I feel like just going back and watching them all now. I don't mm. know how many he's got. He'd have bloody almost hundreds. He's been doing it for years and yeah, years and years. Absolutely. Yeah. Hours and hours. 
Mm. But um, with that rewilding thing, you know, it would be pretty cool to see what like the extinction has to do with that. Mm. Like they want to bring back the mammoth in some form or other for uh, mm. Siberia to keep the permafrost uh, compressed because uh, it stops gas coming out, whatever. Mm. That would be very cool. Be very, very yeah. cool. It would be yeah. very cool. We try to I get in contact. Yeah. I would be down with that. I would very much like to have a, a mammoth that I could go and visit somewhere in Melbourne. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, you ever see that those ads like adopt a, uh, a tiger? Mm. Ad ad adopt a woolly mammoth? Adopt a mammoth. What was yeah. his name? Snuffleupagus? Love it. Love it. Love it. We tried to get in contact with a, a group called Pleistocene Park. Oh, yeah. And they're based out of Siberia and they're trying to like reintroduce all this old uh, fauna from that area. So bringing mm -hmm. back animals that used to be there, not anymore because of hunting and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, the mammoth is a big thing on their agenda that they wanted back. Amazing. So pretty cool. Oh, fingers crossed. Well, yeah. look, he's hoping if anything, this doco, like, it has gone viral but it keeps doing that and people can you know start making a few changes and yeah bring back the the woolly mammoth hey start yeah. a campaign let's hope, let's hope for it um <laughs> but first of all we gotta get out of covid exactly so we can all go and one do step at stuff. a time yeah mm. yeah so I, I think we're doing worse for the environment like right now because we're just sitting at home consuming and then not really going out to do anything else Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, don't know if you get if you get the takeaway. Like, we're all on computers right now. We're using yeah. a lot of electricity we wouldn't use if we were out and about. Mm. Yeah. So on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. There's and there's I suppose one good thing though like, that I have noticed, particularly in Melbourne, obviously uh, with the lockdown that we've had, um, no one's on the road. So there's one. There's like the this. I suppose the air quality has been better here. Like there's not as much sort of pollution or smog because not as many people are out. So that's what been one good thing, mm. but I totally get it. Like, yeah, we've been eating all the takeaway and, and you can't because of COVID too. Like we usually take out like recyclable kind of cups to the cat, to our cat local cafe to get coffee and uh, they won't take them anymore because germs. So it's all like, they're using the plastic takeaway cups again. It's like, ah, we're trying to do the right thing. Um, yeah. And then, of course, all the disposable masks as well are not great. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, you, can't, you can't really do anything right at the moment. It's just a little bit crap. Little and bit even, crap. even the masks, have you seen those pictures of, like, in the New York Harbour, like mm. people just putting a stick into oh, the water yeah. and it's pulling out an unreal amount of masks? Yeah, it's disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's upsetting. You know, oh, we got so rid of plastic straws, but now we got these masks. Masks, I know. It's horrible. No, it's, it's like, I suppose, I feel like, you know, the younger generation, like yourselves, you know, it, then that, that's where I have hope. I'm like, I see and hear so many young people so passionate about this stuff. I'm like, thank yeah. God the young people have brains because fuck off everyone else. Everyone yeah. else is just, nah, not helping, not helping. <laughs> yeah, it's been... Mental. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's looking bleak. But it could be worse. We could be living in the 24 hour movie. Exactly. Uh, we could the be having coming. a meteorite coming towards us. Yeah. Fingers crossed, guys. At least we can, we can solve this problem. <laughs> totally. See, I told you to go on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I love a tangent. I'm all about it. And any excuse to talk about uh, Sir David, I am very much down for. So that's <laughs> <laughs> so besides uh the darkest parts of humanity like climate change and chernobyl what else have you been watching during qu quarantine <laughs> i love it i've gone to real dark places tonight i apologize guys um look i am a massive film and tv uh like buff and yeah like you thomas i have a huge list i've got a list on my all my notes are just full of things i need to watch and uh listen to but TV shows, um, what have I just finished? I am currently watching on Netflix The Haunting of Bly Manor. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yeah, it's a, love it. it's a, love it. Yeah, it's great. So there's obviously, yeah, The Haunting of, um, what was the original one called? I can't even think of the name of it now. 
Haunting on Hill House. That's what it was. The mm. same, the same creators. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I think we've only got about two episodes to go. That's been awesome. I do love horror, like I was saying. Um, I've also just smashed out two seasons of. Um, it's called Criminal, uh, United Kingdom, and again, yep. brilliant writing. David Tennant's in one of the episodes. Um, Sophia Congo, who I love. Um, and yeah just great writing really enjoy that that's been great and i think they've got like i've noticed on netflix they've got like spanish french version and yeah. and german as well have you guys seen that show have you watched it uh my mum watched it told me about it yeah and got, it's great got a bit confused about it being in different languages but like not being the same thing if you get totally me. totally it's a different um, that was like a german equivalent idea, so. but yeah exactly um but yeah i've been on a bit of a david Tennant like uh, I suppose uh, trail at the moment because we watched um, what did we watch I'm listening to his podcast called David Tennant does a podcast with and he has all these amazing guests so I watched Good Omens which I loved uh, with Martin Sheen that was really Michael Sheen sorry that was really cool and um, what else am I watching oh man we've got a bunch on the go at the moment oh The Watchmen as well a kind of TV series version of the film so I don't know if you've seen that one but that's yeah, I prefer the film yeah you preferred the film yeah i've seen and this is an embarrassing thing i have not actually seen the film so i'm gonna watch that once we finish the uh the series but i'm really enjoying that it's good i like kind of dark stuff um yeah. i suppose like the boys and um other sort of similar i have to watch the boys i've heard a lot of good stuff about the boys it's supposed oh, to be very good you love it you love it dude it's very much that kind of like take the piss kind of superhero mm. dark mm sort of vibe. I watched Umbrella Academy during lockdown. Oh, that was great. really good. I watched a lot of things. I watched Cobra Kai. I watched Bojack. Bojack is so good. Oh, Holy Bojack shit. Yeah, so funny. I, I keep trying to watch it. I never it made me it. cry. Oh, I swear it's, to God. Talk about dark. That gets real dark. <laughs> yeah. Like, the end, the latter series. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That, you forget oh, you're watching a horse a cartoon at times. You know? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're, you know, in tears at the second last episode and oh, it just cuts to black. Sure. <laughs> yeah, totally. Then you totally. just realise, oh, it's a horse. <laughs> yeah. I know. You're like, I have to remind myself what I'm watching here. <laughs> but Cobra Kai, what did you think of that? Because I have, I've only watched like two episodes, but Jimmy loved it. He was a massive fan. Did you enjoy Cobra Kai? Um, I'd never seen The Karate Kid before for <gasps> lockdown yes. so Did you I, watch watched, them? I watched the first one yes. and then i watched cobra kai and then i went back and watched the second and third one so there was some stuff i didn't get but at the same time i could kind of get my head around yeah, but it was sure. it was really good uh, it's yeah. really good i'm looking forward to the third season <laughs> Oh, I'll have to I'll have to persist. Jimmy did really enjoy it too, actually. Um, and you know, thing I loved Karate Kid growing up, so I was like hilarious seeing um, what's his name, Mercutio, whatever he's the actor's name that plays the lead in it. He looks exactly the same now. I'm like, that's <laughs> great. I love it. He's just wearing a suit. Brilliant. Who's <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the name of your man? Uh, William. Uh, no. Will, Will Smith's uh, son. What's it called again? Jayden. Oh, Jaden. Do, do you see his version of the Karate Kid? I never saw that. Was it any good? I, I seen it when I was very young. It, it was uh, yeah. it was the first time I seen a Karate Kid movie, and uh, it's actually pretty good. I'll be honest, it's pretty good. It's probably his I best movie. That. Oh my god! I'll have to like give it a nine. watch. <laughs> I'll have I think to give 12. it a watch. Yeah. Because yeah, he's like crazy, like flexible too. I remember seeing the trailer, and he's like he fully trained with you know, karate masters to pr prepare for the film and stuff. <laughs> Good. I will give you props for that. So. <laughs> yeah. Fair fight, <clears throat> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to see the original again. I haven't seen that in a long, long time. Definitely. Definitely go yeah. and check that out. Actually, speaking of, um, we just you know, found a, I think they're called, I'll have to find it. I'll send it to you on Instagram. Um, but this family in Melbourne during lockdown down uh, being incredibly uh, bored and kids not being able to go to school. So it's a mum and dad and two kids. They've got this, um, they've set up an Instagram page called, I think it's called uh, Keegan, Keegan Classics. And they're basically remaking all these classic 
films, like literally shot for shot. So um, they've done like Terminator, Back to the Future, Karate Kid, um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, um, like m- heaps of them. That and sounds it's crazy. Literally shot. It's so clever. I'll have to send you the link. It's so worth a watch. But um, yeah, they've like even put like the whole background. They've set it up the same, same costuming. And of course the kids are doing adult roles. It's really funny. And like Indiana <laughs> Jones, um, Star Wars. It's great. So, so good. So I'm like, oh, Jimmy, maybe we need to get onto the old, uh, you know, movie remakes. Maybe that sounds good. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sorry, lads, I'm right. <laughs> no, yeah. I bet. Maybe it's an idea. Um, well, I, I've seen this argument. So, someone made like a, a YouTube uh, film thing. They were saying like why remakes are always better than the originals. And it was so controversial. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could sort never of say, true. Like, yeah, never. I was going to say that's a big call, big yeah. call. Um, yeah, interesting. I'm finding it interesting, like, uh, what I find confusing, I suppose, is when, like, there's a show that, say, I watch a lot of, like, it sounds so wanky of me, but I love a, a lot of Nordic noir, <laughs> a lot of, like, yeah, Swedish and um, sort of thrillers, and they make... Um, there's Oh, yes, yeah, totally. And they, they make just such good quality, gritty um, cinema. And a lot of it's like in Swedish or it's in, um, you know, like it's in filmed in Norway. So it's the speaking, speaking the native tongue. But then, yeah, America will remake an, an American version. I suppose they did the same with, you know, um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm like, the original's so much better. It's just, can't you read a subtitle? Probably not, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> it frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> we, 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 we have a friend uh, who's involved in the Swedish uh, I guess film scene, and yeah. he says the big problem is that he's not native to Sweden. The Swedish mm-hmm. is very good, but the problem mm-hmm. is people only really work with people they went to college to or that yeah. they're friends with. So right. it's very difficult to break into having been from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, so it's, it's quite rough. a um, closed off scene. Oh, that's, yeah. a fr- that's frustrating. Is Australia similar at all? Oh, like, is, yeah, is it kind of like who you know? Yeah, totally. It's so um, clicky, I suppose, is the word we use in Australia. Like super, you've got to know someone to kind of get your foot in the door, really. And the same people, it's the same as the cast, um, you know, once you're in, you're in and you, the same actors get reused. But it's the same for the crew as well. You know, you find, I, I hear, not that I'm crew but i've got friends that are you know cinematographers and 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 lighting guys and stuff and it is so like unless you know someone you know it's so hard to kind of get get your way in there which sucks it really really sucks yeah um but we are losing a lot of really great (coughs) and and and, uh crew to to the us and to canada as well because there's a huge kind of scene over there and they just obviously the volume of stuff that they make over there is so much bigger than here in australia so you can understand why um yeah. much bigger than ireland it's we have four channels in ireland yeah right for sure that isn't is... it interesting too it is it's that kind of thing of like i don't know what it's like in ireland but our free to air tv is all just reality television in australia like we rarely have sh- like actual scripted drama or anything um because that's all on on the streaming services like Netflix mm. and, and Amazon and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's done this huge shift in the last few years. Mm. And, mm. Um, like there was, there's two good shows. Well, there's a couple of shows happening in Ireland right now. There's first you have like just soap operas, which are on RTE, which is the main Irish channel. Mm-hmm. But then you have some that are made in Ireland, but they're produced mm-hmm. by the BBC. Uh-huh. So it's English producers that are making Irish right. shows. Like ah, normal people. Like normal people. There's the oh, young offenders. Normal people. They're, they're people made are BBC. raving about that. Have you guys mm. watched Normal People? I haven't watched it yet, but people are raving about it. I didn't it. watch it. I've watched it. Is it any good? Jared's Has in it. Yeah. You've been it, Jared. Oh, my God. So you're an actor as well? No. <laughs> Not for that no. thing, no. You saw the back of his head. It was awesome. It was an extra in that thing. <laughs> That's sick, though. That's that was the, so cool. That was the first thing I was ever an extra in for. 
That's cool. awesome. Like That's so cool. Oh my awesome. god. <laughs> and a lush head of hair it is too, my yeah. friend. <laughs> And I showed all my friends. I went around the school and just said, this is Jared. Free spray. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. No, it was really cool because no one knew who the main actor was. <laughs> no, no one knew who any of them were. I like that. I really like that they didn't pick known actors. I think that's really clever. And it's kind of obviously catapulted their careers anyway, yeah. but they're, they're great. I've seen like snippets and trailers and they seem fantastic. It's like, yeah, give some no-name people a go. That's awesome that's cool i know you're you're into like the nordic stuff mm. so i know at the moment they're filming vikings valhalla so that's oh, like a, amazing it's like the viking series series but i think it's like more on the mythology side or something fantastic uh, so that's it's gonna be pretty cool well that's um, very exciting i don't know anything else really filming i know um first city's still filming but uh they they don't have extras they can't have extras and even like they put it into the storyline like the the actors are socially distancing mm. in front of the camera oh wow um, like it's just part of the story now because it's like a reality tv thing yeah right um, no kissing scenes allowed <laughs> i love you wow yeah totally. yeah <laughs> i love you too screen it in <laughs> Yeah. I did see a set of someone they had they couldn't kiss each other on the thing so it was actually in the tv show he was kissing a mannequin <laughs> with like a wig and it looked so bad that's so weird but also amazing oh my but, God. But like, it's so weird because all these actors actresses whatever everyone is getting covid tested i got mm -hmm. i was on set for two weeks or for four weeks i got eight covid tests whoa yeah i got a lot of covid tests you know, yeah. my brain must be in bits at the moment, you know? Yeah. Getting up there with this and it. scrambling it all around. Oh, no. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, my God, you poor thing. That's <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was rough. <laughs> but, like, they're, te they're testing that. They test your temperature when you get there. Like, if, if the actors have been, like, working there a while and they've been negative so many times... Mm. They, you can trace your contacts very easily. Mm. Why, why not just do the, the kiss scene? Because I know, I know yeah, other places true. have done it. Yeah, it's true. I know that's it. If they know that they're clear, like, what's, what's, a, what's a difference going to make? Yeah, it's, so, it's, a, it's a weird world we're living in, isn't it? So crazy. I was actually, Jimmy and I went uh, in January, so before all this kind of really kicked off in Australia, um, we love a lot of electronic kind of music, uh, techno sort of stuff, and we went and saw... Um, well, Fat Boy Slim was playing at. Um, he came over and did a did a concert at the Sydney Maya Music Bowl, which is this huge kind of outdoor venue in yeah. Melbourne. And we went along to that, and it was sold out. Epic night, like hot summer's night, and um, the whole thing was filmed. And they had like all these drones going over filming the the concert. That's awesome. And we watched it back. It was so it was such a good night. And we watched the concert back um, not not that long ago on YouTube, and it was just packed you know uh mosh pit kind of thing happening and you're just like how was that this year like <laughs> you know everyone's touching each other and sweating and i'm like oh my god it's just crazy to think where we are now you know we can't even go two meters without being freaked out by someone so yeah, yeah. how things change it's crazy this year's definitely been a weird one it has something to write about guys hopefully you know you know in a bit we'll be like I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, COVID script writing and amazing things being produced creatively out of this. Like yourself, uh, you're making a podcast. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Episode 130. Oh One. my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's a while. Dude, mm. that's awesome. And I am, I feel very, uh, very honored because uh, I'm 31 and it's your hundred, your uh, 131st uh, episode. So there you go. There Brilliant. you go. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, no, sometimes this is honestly mind numbing doing the podcast. Like, <laughs> I was up so late last night and having to get up early. Like, you, I know you'd have, seen, you'd have seen my message when I messaged you, but if you had seen what I was actually like sending that message, like, I was dozing off. I got the first <laughs> word sent. I was dozing off again. I got the next one in. I sent, I was like, okay, sleep. And you messaged back, I was like, huh, okay, okay, I'm awake. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get up. 
Gotta get out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just psyched myself to get out. I, I like, I told myself I wasn't gonna get up, and I kicked my you blanket off. I kicked my blanket off me. I was like, "Get up now!" Uh, <laughs> I did the I'm same. So I was like, impressed. "It's so warm under here. I can't do this." And <laughs> then I kick so it off. Tempting. It's cold. I need to get into something warmer. And then you've done it. You've done it. Well, I'm very chuffed, guys. Thank you so much for. Uh, making it for me it's brilliant and i'm sorry it's taken ages no, it's but okay. we got there and it was yeah. so worth it because it's like, you know i feel like we've covered all bases we just didn't get it get to religion but perhaps that can be next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so who knows what all that god stuff anyway anyway i know right? i was gonna say god help me but you know who knows, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um okay if people want to check you out they want to follow you see what you're asked where can they find you yeah, so pretty easy. It's just Maddie Tyres, M A D Y T Y E R S, on all the things. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else, I think. YouTube. <laughs> I know Maddie and Jimmy on YouTube. There you go. So yeah, Maddie Tyres, that's me. And all the things. <laughs> all the things. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, you should like, comment, subscribe. Maybe tell your grandma about the podcast. Take it handy. Good luck to you.